Let's open the Bible in the book of Matthew chapter 19 from verse 16 to 29. Praise the Lord. Book of Matthew chapter 19 from verse 16 to 29. And we read the Bible in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And behold, one came and said unto him, Good Master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? And he said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. He said unto him, Which? Jesus said, Thou shalt do no murder. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Honor thy father and thy mother. And thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. The young man said unto him, All these things I have I kept from my youth up. What lack I yet? Jesus said unto him, If thou wilt be perfect, go and sell that thou hast and give to the poor and thou shalt have treasure in heaven and come and follow me but when the young man heard that saying he went away sorrowful for he had great possessions then said Jesus unto his disciples verily I say unto you that a rich man shall hardly enter into the kingdom of heaven and again I say unto you it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. When his disciples heard it, they were exceedingly amazed, saying, Who then can be saved? But Jesus beheld them and said unto them, With, with men this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. Then answered Peter and said unto him, Behold, we have forsaken all and follow thee. What shall we have therefore? And Jesus said unto them, Verily I say unto you that ye which have followed me in the regeneration when the Son of Man shall set in the throne of his glory, ye also shall set upon twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. And every one that hath forsaken houses or brethren or sister or father or mother or wife or children or lands for my name's sake shall receive an hundredfold and shall inherit everlasting life. Amen. May the Lord bless this word too in this morning. Have your seat please. Hallelujah. I think that it is the third message concerning obedience. Amen. Last message was the second one on Friday night and I'm going to speak to you according to what God gave me amen to give you and today the topic is God rewards the right obedience amen God rewards the right obedience praise the Lord this man <coughs> came unto Jesus and what people didn't realize is the nature of Jesus. People, most of them, because in order to see his divinity, we have to have the Holy Spirit and to receive the revelation, to know that he is God. Amen. And just few knew that and they were blessed. Amen. But most of people saw Jesus Christ as a simple man amen and this one was one of them and came and saw him and said to him good master what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life with that expression good master amen Jesus knew before the foundation of the world that one day he was going to come to meet him and to ask him that question before the foundation of the world Jesus knew that this guy came just to boast about himself amen and 
and, and knew Jesus, his intent that was to place himself in the same position of him, Jesus Christ, who was God, to say to him, good master. In other words, I am another good master. Amen? Because if you are good, also I am good. And later on you may find that he tried to boast before God that he kept the commandments and he tried to say to him that he was good. Good master. Amen? It was his intent. What he didn't realize that the one who was before him was not a simple human being. It was the revelation of God manifested in the flesh. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, Son of Man. Praise the Lord. Amen? How many of you praise the name of the Lord? And with that question, good master, what shall I do that I may have eternal life? Jesus answered the right answer to that question with another question. Amen? Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one that is God. In other words, Jesus with that word that said to him, There is none good but one that is God, said to him, You are a sinner and you are not good. Amen. In the book of Romans 3 verse 12, the Bible says, There is none that doeth good, no, not one. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> Jesus didn't need to explain a profound theological explanation to him. Just said to him, there is no one good. Don't come to me with that intent of boasting about yourself that you are good. Amen? Because no one is good. How many of you praise the name of the Lord? Hallelujah. And I, it is the problem of human beings. When a great artist died by consuming drugs. Amen. People try to justify them to say, no, he was a good person. She was a good person. No, he didn't or she didn't die because of that. Somebody poisoned him. And they tried to look for someone to blame. Right? It was the doctor. Right? But they don't admit that they are not good. Can you understand me? How many of you praise the name of the Lord? That is the problem of us. We try to justify ourselves. This morning, because I was not able to sleep, as you know, just two or three hours daily, praise the Lord, that is going to give me the victory, amen? But I profit the time. I go to my knees to pray, <laughs> amen? And after it, I went to internet and to see the comments of people that write to me in my YouTube account. And there is a video that I have concerning someone who was homosexual. Plenty of people write. And he said, uh, and one said about himself, I don't think that homosexuality is sin. I am homosexual. And I am a good person. I try my best. I help my family. I do this and that and that and that, but I am a good person. I think that God loves me. <laughs> you understand? Amen? Praise the Lord. That is our nature. We don't want to accept that we are not good. That we are evil. Amen? And with that answer that Jesus said to this young guy, ruler, there is no good but one that is God. Jesus said to him, you are not good. But he didn't realize. Amen. Glory to his name. He didn't realize that Jesus was saying to him, you are evil. But Jesus, to prove him, 
that he was evil and sinner said to him if thou wilt enter into life keep the commandments amen keep the commandments you think that you are so good so able keep the commandments but not that this guy was so proud in such a way that instead of saying nobody is able to keep the commandments amen he boasted before jesus amen first of all not knowing that he was god that he knew his life praise the lord but he saw jesus as a simple good master and that's why he boasted about uh, 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 in his presence and said to him which which do you understand amen which ones tell me tell me which one show me one amen my goodness with that answer matthew 19 verse 18 he said unto him which he was saying to jesus there is something else that i haven't kept are you getting the point? Which? Amen? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something. Our Lord Jesus has patience with us. Amen? Our Lord Jesus Christ has patience with us. Amen? Thank God that we are not God. We don't have patience. Amen? Because sometimes we get angry with a person that who is fool and don't understand. Ah, we get angry with that person. Amen? And the disciples, they went to Samaria to open way for the Lord. He was going to perform miracles and to preach the gospel. And the, Sam the Samaritans, Bible says, didn't receive them and John and the sons of CBD came to Jesus angry Lord please can we pray God to ask God to make fire this sin and consume them amen we get angry but Jesus is different he is God he has patience with us with our pride, with our evil nature. Praise the Lord. Remember, He knows our frame. He knows our condition. He remember that we are dust. Amen. Praise the Lord. How many of you praise the name of the Lord? Jesus had so patience because Jesus could say, why you said to me which? And you know that. Amen. Amen. Because he said, which? Amen. But Jesus has had patience with him and said, which one? Okay, I'm going to say to you, which ones? Thou shalt do not murder. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Honor thy father and thy mother. And thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. You notice the patience of God with us. That God speaks a sermon and we don't repent. And we don't humble before him. And we don't change. Right? And he has the right to say the time is gone for this person. I'm going to cut him off and to send him to hell. Because the wages of sin is death. And he doesn't repent. But he has patience. And he continue explaining to us his word, expecting that one day we will repent. But watch, watch out, because the patience of the Lord has limits. Amen? And when the limits come to that point, 
Bible says he cuts people off. Amen. Glory to his name. But Jesus explained something that he knew. Amen. This fellow heard Jesus and said, when Jesus was quoting him verse after verse, this fellow was in this attitude. I know, I know, I know, I know. Amen. Have you heard people, when you go to preach to them the word of God, and they say, I know, I know, I know. Pride, pride, and pride. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. This fellow boasted before Jesus and as soon as he finished the sentence, Amen, he boasted before Jesus. He did two things. First of all, he boasted. And he said, the young man said unto Jesus in verse 20, All these things have I kept from my youth up. Number one. You see? He boasted himself. I am good. And the second thing that he did was he challenged Jesus Christ. What lack I yet? In other words, show me something different. Show me something that I don't know. Impress me. Are you getting the point? How good is the word of God, amen? I worship him, praise the Lord. He is God, he has patience, amen? He has patience. Because instead of admitting our condition to say you are right, I am wrong, you are true and I, uh, too truthful, I am a liar, amen? We boast, amen? And he knows everything about us. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Jesus saw him in the book of Mark 10 verse 21. Bible says that Jesus saw him and loved him. You know why Jesus loved him? Bible says Mark 10 verse 21 after hearing that from him, Jesus beholding him loved him. You know why? Besides his pride, Jesus realized and he knew that his, he tried his best to keep the law. Amen? Are you getting the point? And that's why I loved him because he had a right attitude. Amen? To obey the commandments of the Lord. Amen. But what he didn't understand was the purpose of the law. And he didn't understand the message of the law. That is to teach us that we are sinners, that we are not able to keep the law. Amen. That's why he boasted. All these things I have kept from my youth up. And it was not so. Because Jesus said in John 7 verse 19, Did not Moses give you the law? And yet none of you, none of you keepeth the law. Nobody was able. Nobody is able. Amen. How many of you praise the name of the Lord? Hallelujah. But Jesus loved him. You know why Jesus loved him? Not because he has any any good thing before him amen just because he was a soul needed of salvation and he tried his best to get that salvation by his own effort are you getting the point and that's why he loved him because he wanted eternal life Amen? On the contrary, there are some people, or many people, I think, that they don't want about eternal life, about salvation. They don't care. They don't mind about it. They left 
as an animals, as animals in this world, just eating, having sex, reproducing, and dying. That's it. But there are some people who think about even lasting life. Where do we expand our eternity? Where, where are we going to spend our eternity? There are some people who think about as this guy. That's why Jesus loved him. Praise the Lord. Because he was a soul needed of salvation. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. And Jesus said, I am going to do something to save you. Amen. And then Jesus revealed him the way, amen, to save him. Matthew 19, verse 21. Amen. Says, if thou wilt be perfect, in other words, because you place yourself in the same position of God, amen, as a good person and no one is good just God if thou wilt be perfect number one in Mark, in Mark 20, 10 verse 21 says the other thing and to be safe in order to understand who you are one thing thou lackest amen go and sell that thou hast and give to the poor. Amen. And thou shalt have treasure in heaven. Amen. Notice with that word Jesus said. If you obey me. You will be rewarded. That's why the topic in this morning is. God rewards the right obedience. Amen. How many of you praise the name of the Lord? One thing thou lackest, go and sell that thou hast, and give to the poor, and promise him a reward, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven. Are you getting the point? With that word, go and sell what you have, and give to the poor, was saying, obey that commandment. If you are able, if you, because you think that you are perfect, do it. Amen? Wow. How many of you praise the name of the Lord? Yes. Hallelujah. Just with this part, because the other part of the commandment was given not only for him, but to all. Come and take up the cross and follow me. That commandment is for all. Amen. Just with the first part of this commandment was enough to reveal him that he was not good. That he was a sinner. Evil. Amen. Glory to his name. Are you following me? Amen. And go sell what you have and give to the poor. Amen. That commandment was given by Jesus. Do it. Do it. Amen. Because he didn't realize in Romans 3 verse 20 Bible says that by the deeds of the law there shall no flesh be justified in his sight. Because the purpose of the commandment for, the, for by the law is the knowledge of sin. That commandment that Jesus said to him, go and sell what you have and give to the poor, that commandment was to make him know that he was a sinner. That he was not able to do it. Are you getting the point? And why? Because of our nation. Praise the Lord. He heard that saying and he was shocked. Amen. He was 
naked before the creator of heaven and earth. He was disheartened. Amen. He lost all his strength. His blood, my goodness, his heart didn't work properly. His mind, his thoughts, wow. It is, this man is not a good master. Something else. Are you getting the point? That is our God. Amen. And he had the choice. I have two choices. To fall in his feet, at his feet and to say, Oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from this evil nation that say to me, Don't go, don't sell, don't give to the poor. In front of him was his one. It was the first choice. And the second choice was to go away without obeying. Amen? But in that moment when the commandment came to him, that commandment revealed to him that he was a sinner, not good. Amen? Because if he were a good person, He was able to obey that commandment. Amen? Jesus Christ brings people to that point to make us know that we are not good. When we reach that point, we have two choices. To get up and to go away from him or to fall at his feet. Amen. We have two choices. To fall at his feet and to beseech him help. That's why Jesus Christ, before he went to die, he showed his disciples how to obey God. Because he received a commandment to go to die on cross, to be the sacrifice for our salvation. Right? And he came to that point that this guy came to face the commandment of God. Amen? Go and sell and give to the poor what you have. And Jesus came to that point. Go to Jerusalem and die. Amen? But Jesus fell on his knee, on his knees. And Bible says that besought God with tears with a strong crying. Amen? Who delivered him, Bible says. And by his obedience, he became to be the author of eternal salvation for those who obey him. Amen? And he taught his disciples that that is the way to obey God. Amen? To fall at his feet. How many of you praise the name of the Lord? Because no one is able to obey God. Amen? That's why Jesus said, Abide in me, remain at my feet. Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of, of, of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye, except ye abide in me. If if he that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me ye can do nothing. Amen. How many of you praise the name of the Lord? Let me tell you something. To that point, Jesus brings his people, amen, to make a choice. When we preach the true gospel. When we don't preach the true gospel, people don't come to this point. Amen? To be honest, false gospels or messages don't bring people to this point to make a choice. What shall I do? Or either I fail in my 
my knees, I kneel down before him and I humble before him and admit that I am a sinner that I need of him or I go away. Amen. Glory to his name. Amen. That is love. People say, no, that is not love. That pastor hates me because every time I go to that church, he is bothering me, hindering my life, speaking against the things that I love. I am not the one. Is Jesus through my life bringing you to this point? Amen. And they are like this young ruler seeing me as a good master. I am not the one who is speaking to you. Is the God of heaven through my life? Because in this play, the first one needed of him is me. In this place, the first one of needing of him is me. And I have to come before him to say, help me, Lord. I want to be confident with you. And I want you to be confident with me. But every struggle, every temptation, amen, is brought at his feet. Lord, I saw something outside. Somebody spoke to me. Somebody sat close to me. And these thoughts are in my mind. Lord, I am not able to take them away. But you are able. Help me, Lord. I don't want to disobey you. I don't want to do my will. I don't want to give, to put my life away from you, from you Lord. Help me, Lord. I am not able. I am a sinner. I am weak. Amen. I do it. I abide in him saying, Lord, without you I can do nothing. Help me, Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory to his name. But this young ruler, instead of saying to him, help me, Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory to his name. He didn't want to come to him as God, as Lord. You know why? Because he depended on his business or riches rather than on God. Matthew 19 verse 22 Bible says, But when the young man heard that saying, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. Amen? And he went away sorrowful because he admitted in his heart Yes, I am not a good person. I am a sinner. But I love my riches. Amen? I am a sinner, but I love something else beside him. Are you getting the point? Be honest with him. Lord, true. It is not right. I love it. But I want to love you, Lord. And I cannot love you in my own strength. Just help me to love you, Lord. Are you getting the point? If we say to him that the love of God is poured out into our heart and he will strengthen us to obey the commandment. How many of you praise the name of the Lord? But he went away loving his riches. And Bible said that Jesus looked round about and saith, verse Matthew 10 verse 23 Mark Mark 10 verse 23 to 24 Bible said that Jesus looked looked around about and said unto his disciples how hardly shall they that have riches 
enter into the kingdom of God. Amen. And the disciples were astonished at his words. But Jesus answered again and said unto them, Children, how hard it is for them that trust in riches to enter into the kingdom of God. The problem was not the riches. The problem was his evil heart that he didn't want to admit before him. Amen? Every time that you face a temptation, first of all, admit that it is a temptation. Admit that it is evil. The problem of us is that we enjoy thinking in that temptation. And we don't want to put away those evil thoughts, those evil desires. Because before the action, the desire is. Amen? Put those evil desires. Admit first of all that they are evil. And why? Because I am evil. They are coming not from outside. Don't blame any computer, any internet, any movie, somebody else. Play yourself. Blame yourself. From the heart of man, those evil thoughts are coming out. Amen? First of all, admit that. Let's admit that. And then, bring it at his feet. Amen? Because Jesus says that the problem was not money or riches. The problem is that our evil heart trusts more in money than rather than on God. Amen? Jesus doesn't say that to have money is sin. Not. Abraham was rich. And he was the father of faith. And there were other people that had money. And they were rich. It is a fact. I cannot deny that. Amen. But the Bible says in the book of Psalm chapter 62 verse 10. Trust not in oppression. And become not vain in robbery. If riches increase, set not your heart upon them. Amen. In other words, do not depend on what you have and what you are. Amen. Because what you have, God is able to remove them. What you are, God is able to cancel what we are. Amen. Are you getting the point? 1 Corinthians chapter 7 verse 29 Bible says, but, but this I say brethren, the time is short, it remaineth that both, that both they that have wives be as though they had none. Those who have a wife or something behave as though you have none. Are you getting the point? Amen? You have wisdom? You are smart? You have money? You have any talent? Think as you have none. You have money, reputation, this world, think as you have none. How many of you praise the name of the Lord? Glory to his name. Amen. That was the problem. At least this one realized that he was a sinner, not perfect. Amen. No, he was not good. And he went away sorrow, sorrowful. He went, he went away sad. Extremely sad. But there are those that go away angry with this kind of message. Amen? You remember Nehaman? Nehaman? The, the 
great general of, of the Syrian army in the book of 1 Kings chapter 5 from verse 1 to 14 you may find it Amen Bible says that he, he gave great victories to his king and after coming from those victories he had to face a reality who he was but he didn't want to admit that after getting the victories the mirror was in front of him to say to him you are a leper <laughs> amen are you getting the point and his wife knew that and there was a maid helping them that was brought from Israel and this Jew girl, Jewish girl said to her mistress why my master don't go to Israel there is a prophet there and he will pray God and God will heal him amen and Nehemiah went to his king and the king sent letters to the king of Israel to heal his general as soon as the letters came to the king of Israel and read the, the petition he said who is this king that I am I am not a god he is looking for occasion to attack me amen and Elisha knew that and said to the king send a, a message do not worry let uh, that guy come here to Israel and to know that there is a prophet in Israel and he came that general amen with his company of soldiers a troop and he thought in himself as soon as I reach the house of the prophet because I am the great one of Syria he will come out make obeisance before me and lay his hands upon me and God will heal me amen as he was approaching that house a servant came out and he didn't make any obeisance he didn't say my master my my my, my uh, the prophet is going to come to humble before you to pray for you not but he said this the prophet said that you came to be healed do not worry just go to the river Jordan and watch seven times there and you will be healed that's it amen that message struck him amen but God wants to save us more than our physical healing he wants to heal our hearts first of all to make us know that we are sinners that we need of him amen Bible says that he was angry Nahum, Nahum in the book of 2nd Kings Bible says Nahum was rough and went away and said behold I thought he will surely come out to me and stand and call on the name of the Lord his God and strike his hand over the place and recover the leper and not Abana and Parpas, river of Damascus, better than all the waters of Israel. May I not watch in them and be clean? So he turned and went away in a rage. There are some people who come to the church, and when Jesus speak to them how to be saved, they said. No, I don't need to be saved. I am a good person. I am saved. I am a child of God. I don't need to repent. I don't need to change. I don't need, I don't need to be born again. Because I made a short prayer a long time ago. And I said Christ. And I don't know the gospel. I go to church. They trust in themselves. But when God no, God, uh, sees them and speaks a word against them, 
them, they get angry. To go to the church, Pastor Alex, hmm, I doubt if he is a pastor. I doubt he is preaching a true gospel. He is preaching different to the others. He is not a pastor. That is a sect, a cult. Imposing deeds of man or works of man to be saved. Commandments of man to be saved. That is not the gospel. Jesus paid the price in Calvary. I am saved. I don't need to change. I don't need to crucify myself. I don't need to change my life style. Ah, the pastor all the time is bothering me from the pulpit. And they go away angry. If you meet some of them, they are not going to speak any good thing about, about me. Or maybe some will speak. But they say, Pastor is, is a nice person, but his message, that, that way, how, how he preaches. Amen? It is not only me. Those true servants that are allowing God to speak to people have to face this reality. Amen? Glory to his name. Even I can quote the verse to the Bible how the prophets, they face that struggle that people doubted that they were true servants of God. I have the verse of the Bible but I don't have time to show you. But it is written. How this guy sent me to watch seven times in the river Jordan? I prefer to go to another prophet. Amen? He will send me to go to the rivers of Damascus. They are nicer. Amen? Fine. Uh, you know, that pastor is sending me to the river of Jordan, who is a dirty river. How many of you praise the name of the Lord? At least the young ruler went away sad, admitted, yes, it is true, that message. But I love the riches. But others go away angry. Praise the Lord that God has his instruments. And the servants came to Naaman. The general said, My Lord, why you don't go? If he asks you to do something greater, you, will, you will, would not do it. You will do it. Let's try and let's go. And the Bible says that he changed his mind and went. Praise the Lord that there are good people. Amen. That work with God. To affirm that this message is true. But there are some people who say. Eh, right. Yes. True. That message of Pastor Alice is so fanatic. But have patience with him. No. You, why, why you don't say to them. Why you don't test. Try. And you will see that your heart will be healed. And you will experience the true living waters flowing through your life. Amen? But, uh, no, 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 yes, I understand. We have to have patience with him. One day he will change. Have patience. I have a frame that makes pastor to change. It's Satan. One day he will change. <laughs> My goodness. How many of you praise the name of the Lord? You see, how good it is to taste the goodness of the Lord when we come to this point to face Him and to hear Him. But if you hear a message about how good you are, you have potential. God chose you from before the foundation of the world. He destined you to be someone in this world for this purpose. You came to the church and you're going to be someone in this world. False gospel. 
false gospel. If I teach you those messages about super faith, if you believe you obtain everything, if humanism, just confess, don't speak any negative word and confess positivism, pos confess faith, 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 and you will obtain everything. The foxes have whole uh, caves and the fowls of the air have nest to have the youngs. But the Son of Man has no any stone to lay his head. In other words, Jesus confessed negativism. I don't have money. I don't have but this preacher said you should have faith. Don't confess negative things. False message. Gospel is not about that. Gospel has to do with him, first of all, that he is Lord, he is God. He died on the cross and has to do as well with me. I am a sinner, I need of him. That's it. Amen. How many of you praise the name of the Lord? And there are the ones who affirm and support this message. Just try. Go. Let's obey. And he went and Bible says sunk three times, seven times. The seventh time Bible says that he rose up and his flesh was turned into babies. Skin and flesh. Amen. How many of you praise the name of the Lord? But there are the ones who go away angry. Praise the Lord. But also there are the others that disguise the commandment. You know, disguise the commandment. Okay, I go. And I do what you say, but in my way, not in your way. Are you getting the point? That lady, the Samaritan, came to Jesus, and Jesus said, Whosoever drinketh of that water will be thirsty again, but the ones who drink of my water have everlasting life, in other words. And she, and she said, I want that water, give me of that water. And Jesus said, Okay, you want that water? Amen, no problem. Jesus said to her, go, call thy husband and come hither. That was the commandment. To bring people to this point. You see, that is the true message of Jesus Christ. To bring people to this point. To make a choice. To fall at his feet or to go away. Amen. This woman said, okay, I'm going to obey the commandment. I think that you are a prophet. I think that, oh, you are the Messiah. And, and she went to the city. And she preferred to bring all the entire city than to bring, rather than bring in her husband. Are you getting the point? She was not saved. Research the scripture and you will find that she didn't, didn't bring her husband. And the commandment was, go call thy husband and come hither. In other words, go to your husband. With that commandment was Jesus saying to her, go and ask forgiveness. Repent of the six ones that you have, have had and come and ask me forgiveness. Amen? Are you getting the point? But this one, this guy is the commandment. Went and brought an entire city to say, I am justified, save me for doing that. And that's why there are many people who disguise the commandment of the Lord instead of bringing their hearts to him, they bring money. With money, I'm going to buy God. Offerings, tithes, 
special seeds. Amen. But we cannot buy God with money. Amen. God doesn't need our money. Even if we bring all the money of the world, God doesn't need garbage. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Jesus' disciples conclu conclude, if it is so, nobody can be saved. Matthew 19 verse 25. When his disciples heard it, they were exceedingly amazed, saying, who then can be saved? Amen. But Jesus said to them that no man can be saved by his own effort or deeds, just through God, man can be saved. Matthew 19 verse 26, Jesus beheld them and said unto them, with men salvation, it is impossible. With men, this is impossible. To obey the commandment of God is impossible. Salvation in our own deeds is impossible. Amen? Don't try to keep the Sabbath to be saved. Don't try to be baptized in a certain name to be saved. Don't try to buy God with money to be saved. Amen? Don't try to do something else to be saved because salvation is coming from God and we are not able. Amen? You, we cannot be saved by coming to church, by worshiping Him, by praising Him, by jumping, by dancing. I go to church, I jump, I praise Him, I am saved. Because of doing that, we are not saved. We are saved when we reach this point and we fall on His knees, on His feet to say, Help me, save me. But to do it, we have to hear the true gospel. And to hear the true gospel, we have to close our ears to those false messages around that are sending people to hell. Why? Because those preachers are saying to people, you are good. There is no problem. You made a short prayer a long time ago and the sacrifice of Christ is enough to save you. You should do anything, do nothing to be saved. They are saving people to hell. Because people don't need to humble before him. To kneel down before him, to shed tears, to obey his commandment before him. That's why those people when they go to church, they don't bow down. They don't spe spend hours in their knees daily to beseeching Him to help them. Are you getting the point? Because if I don't have this attitude every day in repentance, every day, I am not saved. For man, it is impossible to be saved. Jesus said, Father, if it is possible, pass from me this cup, but let not my will be done, but yours. And he realized that the only way to save humankind was the sacrifice of cross. Through that sacrifice we are saved. For man it is impossible. It is possible, pass from me. It was not possible. It was the only way be saved and God himself offered his life for people and also resurrected to justify us. Amen? How many of you praise the name of the Lord? With God, but with God all things are possible. Even salvation, even to obey his commandments. Amen? 
because through him Jesus Christ who is God I can do all things through Christ which strengthened me you see the false preacher say I can do all things through Christ which strengthened me just to reach possessions in this world to be successful in this world to gain recognition in this world and they say I can do all things Jesus is not any servant amen who is in our world all does to go and to do everything what I want he is sovereign. He knows what is right for us. In his sovereignty, in his sovereignty, he decides to whom he is going to bless, to prosper, to give recognition, and to whom he is not going to do this. Amen. Are you getting the point? Glory to his name. How many of you praise the name of the Lord? Hallelujah. But Jesus promised to that guy, if you obey me to go and sell thy possessions and give to the poor, you will have riches in heaven. He promised him that in obeying him, we are rewarded. Are you getting the point? That's why Peter said in that moment behold we have forsaken all and followed thee what shall we have therefore because if you promise that guy to have riches in heaven what about us if we have forsaken all a old boat a broken net <laughs> you understand it is all that we have. He forsook. Amen. And he expected Jesus to give him all. But anyhow, God is merciful. What we have forsaken? Saints. Amen. Garbage in this world. Amen. Nothing. What we wear. Oh, I am studying in university. I dedicate all my life to studying and I obtain a degree. And now you call me to suffer in this country. I have forsaken it all. It's garbage. In comparison with the salvation, what he did on the cross is garbage. Amen? But still, he promised to bless obedience, to reward our obedience and Jesus taught them that this kind of obedience the right obedience which is depending on him amen is rewarded and Jesus said unto them verily I say unto you that ye which have followed me in the regeneration when he when the son of man shall set in the throne of his glory ye also shall sit upon twelve thrones judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Let me tell you something. What a great reward he is going to give his true people. That Jesus said, He that overcometh, I will grant him to sit in my throne as I have sitting in the throne of my father. Wow. Do you think that we deserve that? No, we don't deserve that. But still Jesus is saying, those who obey me will reign with me for all eternity. Wow. You and I deserve that? No. Millions of millions of times I say not. Who is worthy is he, not me. Amen. How many of you praise the name of the Lord? The best in life. And Jesus said, And everyone that hath forsaken houses, Amen, houses, or brethren, or sisters, or father, or mother, or wife, or 
children or lands for my name's sake shall receive an hundredfold in this earth and shall inherit everlasting life. Apostle Paul says that this commandment has promise in this life and the life which is to come. Amen? You see, obedience has a great reward, but in this way, don't twist the scripture preachers that say, bring your seed and you will have hundredfold. Because Jesus said, forsake those your goodness and your money and you will have hundredfold. No, don't twist the scripture. The scripture. Obey him by coming to his feet, by dying at his feet, depending on him, and we'll get those stuff. Amen? In the book of Mark, and shall inherit everlasting life. In the book of Mark 10, 30 says, with persecutions. Amen? Praise the Lord. Salvation is enough. But He grant us. He promised us a throne to reign with Him. Wonderful. And to be like Him. Wonderful. Why we don't obey Him if He is offering everything? The strength, the help. That's why Jesus said, It is damnation or condemnation that the light came to the world, but people loved darkness. They don't, didn't want to love Jesus Christ. They preferred to go away sad, angry, and disguising the commandment, but loving, loving darkness, loving that husband that is not hers loving that money that is sending him to hell loving the lust of the flesh the lust of the eyes loving pride amen that is the nation because they don't want to love jesus christ this way let's stand up please Let's pray.